Hello, welcome back to Elise Reads and Speaks. Today, I have learned from my past video and I am making a mid-month wrap-up. Today, I believe is February 17th and I have already read 11 books, so I'm just guessing by the end of February, I'm probably gonna be up to that number of 20 again. It has been a crazy time. However, I will say that last weekend there was an ice storm and I had nothing to do other than read and listen to my kid complain. So I chose to read and I read like five books over that weekend. So that's why my number is so high. And as I'm filming this, we are supposed to get an ice storm tonight. So I'm just guessing that tomorrow and Saturday probably gonna be the same deal. So that's why I'm doing my mid-month wrap up. Okay, so to start off the month of February, I have started strong. I listened to the audiobook of Nevermore. <sighs> Oh my gosh, I understand you guys. I understand why everybody and their mother has been recommending this book to me. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. Oh my gosh, it was just like so exciting to be in this magical world. If you're not familiar with Nevermore, it is about this girl who was thought to be cursed. Um, and in this world that she lives in, some people are given bids by other magical people in these different worlds. And if you get a bid, it's like you become their apprentice, all right? It's very rare for somebody to get more than one bid. And Morgan Crow ends up getting three, but she thinks it's like a, a farce that people are making fun of her because she's supposed to be this unlucky person. You learn more about her and her backstory as you go through this book. There is like a magical trial, which is like my jam, okay? I love when people have different forms of magic and then you put them against each other and see who's is better. It's so exciting. And there were just such fun things in here. There is a girl that is always forgotten, all right? So she meets people. The second that she turns around, they don't remember meeting her. I mean, there was just interesting magic like this in here, and Morrigan is just endearing. She is the cutest little thing, and I felt like I was rooting for her the entire time, and I just, I had that tingly, magical feeling as I was reading this book, like, oh my gosh, this is a series. This is a series that's gonna be one of my favorites. I have not gone on to the second and third yet because my library doesn't have them on audio, so I need to get the physical copies in my hands. But oh my gosh, guys, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the next two. Then I read Crush by Tracy Wolf. This is the second book that comes after Crave. And man, I was so into it. I was so into it. I gave the first one, Crave, three stars, I believe, and I was kind of like embarrassed that I was giving it three stars because the writing was not good and it was cheesy, campy, and I enjoyed it. And I was like, whatever, I don't care. I'll give it three stars because I liked it. Dude, no joke, I loved the second one. I mean, I thought it was worlds better than the first. I do think the writing picked it up a bit. And I liked some of the different stuff that was in this one. Like, okay, we know that this is a supernatural kind of story with vampires and werewolves and dragons and witches. However, I have never read a YA story featuring a gargoyle. Have you? Like, I just felt that that was so different. The lore that they put into it, like, I just, I felt like I was reading something fresh that I haven't come across. I mean, I love vampire stories. I read vampire stories all the time. Lay them on me, they're fantastic. But gargoyles, like, that was just something that I didn't see coming and I was so, so into it. And I'll tell you what made me feel better. Oh, by the way, I gave this one four stars. Did I say that? I gave it four stars. For like sheer enjoyment value, five stars probably, but like four stars because I mean, the writing's not fantastic. It's not, it's just a very good time. But anyway, what I was going to say, what made me feel better about this, and if you guys are watching this, feel free to give me a thumbs up. But I was writing my review on Goodreads and I saw that TB and Monty had also rated it very high. And I was like, okay, that does make me feel a little better to see the guys whose videos I watch also massively enjoy this second book. <laughs> like, I guess I shouldn't be embarrassed for liking it as much as I do, but I am embarrassed because it is campy, but whatever, whatever. Just let me like what I want to like. It was a good time. Next, I listened to the audiobook of Uncommon Type by Tom Hanks. Now, I have my finger open to this page because this was one of the Barnes & Noble editions of signed books, and it's signed by Tom Hanks. Listen. I love me some Tom Hanks. I love this man. He's probably my favorite actor of all time because he's Tom Hanks. He's amazing. He's so great. And I'm talking him up so much because this book was not so great. Oh, and I feel awful saying that because I love Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, if you're watching this, I love you. I love you. And I feel like I don't have the right to give you two stars for anything. 
but I just didn't really enjoy this. I could not connect. The first story, I actually had my hopes up because I was like, you know, that was kind of cute. It was this three week relationship where they realized that they just weren't right for each other. And there was, there was something between them and I could feel the spark. And it was just like a, a charming, endearing little story. And then each story that came afterwards, I felt like I was getting more and more detached from the characters. I wasn't caring about the overall plot and I don't know, it just, it was not sucking me in. I felt like I was waiting for the audiobook to be over, which sucks because it was narrated by Tom Hanks, who's amazing. I mean, honestly, it was very nice to listen to his voice. Very good audiobook narrator. I would listen to him narrate something else. And I will say, Tom Hanks can write characters, so I enjoyed that part of it. I feel like he can write a character really well and give them a, a good backstory. However, I feel that character work was kind of lost in the overall plot because then there wouldn't be much of a plot and I didn't care. It, there just was not a very good marriage between the plot and the characters. Oh, I, I feel like I'm wrong. Like I should not be allowed to give Tom Hanks two stars, but I am allowed and I did and I feel really bad about it. Oh God. But you know what? I'm still gonna hold on to this book because it has Tom Hanks's signature and Tom Hanks, again, if you're watching this, I love you. So next I went on to Love is for Losers by Wibka Brugman. This was one of the arcs that I had from NetGalley and I gave this one four stars. This was super cute. It is about this girl who has a little bit of a falling out with her very close friend. Not so much a falling out. It was that her, her close friend got a boyfriend and you know what happens in high school when one of your friends gets a boyfriend. They suddenly forget that you exist and your friendship kind of falls to pieces while they're in the throes of love. Okay, so that's what's happening to the main girl in here. So this main girl, works in a thrift store. All right. And I love this. It's like a found family in a thrift store. And there was a bunch of eclectic characters. Okay. There was her, her mother figure. It wasn't actually her mother because her mother went to go help some refugees in a refugee camp and left her behind with her best friend that I was like, okay, different layers of things happening here. But anyway, the mother figure, Kate, fantastic character. I feel like that's one of those characters that's needed in some YA books because it's showing that, you know, there are people that will love you just as much as your, your parents. They choose you to be their family. You know, I just, I thought that was very sweet. There's also some other characters in this thrift store. Okay. There is a boy with Down syndrome. I completely forgot that he had Down syndrome because they didn't harp on that the entire time. And I really liked that. He was just a guy working at the thrift store that had Down syndrome. I suddenly remembered that he did when this girl was going to have a party and he asked if his parents could come along and I was like, oh, that's right. Oh, he's so cute. Like there, there was just some really good stuff in here. And I, I personally like when there is a character with a disability and it doesn't completely define them. All right. I'm talking about this character like he's a main character and he's not, but it was just something that really stuck out as important to me. This, this story was just adorable. So this, this main girl falls in love with this other girl that works at the thrift store. So she's thinking the whole time that, you know, her, her best friend is in love with this other guy and she is just going to swear off love. She thinks that love makes people into idiots and it's not for her. And all of a sudden she starts falling into love as well. And she also didn't realize that she would be attracted to a girl. And it was just a story with a lot of different layers. I thought the humor was great. It was like fun, quirky British humor and it totally got me. And when I finished the story, I felt like uplifted. You know, I felt like I had a smile on my face when I ended the story. And that's just, ah, that's all I could ask for. Then I read Rosie Loves Jack by Mel Darbin. This was another e-arc that I got from NetGalley and I was really stoked for this one because the story centers around a girl with Down syndrome that's in love with another boy and she is just gonna find her way to this boy that was taken away from her. So, okay, I know the premise sounds cute because I thought it was gonna be cute. It was not cute, it was not cute. Um, Listen, I don't want to ruin anything in the plot, but I do think it's important to note certain things. I looked in the blurb for this after I read the story. I looked through other reviews and they seem to dance around it. I don't think you should dance around it, okay? I think you should know going into a story about a girl with Down syndrome that decides to leave home to find a boy, she ends up in some bad situations. She ended up in a house of trafficked girls. All right, so there is trafficking in this book. Like if that's a trigger for you, you should know going into it and don't open the book. Also, if something is a trigger for you as far as people with disabilities really being treated poorly in situations like that, also 
don't read this book. It's not for you. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that out loud. I'm not ruining anything for you. I didn't tell you the entire story, you know, but that's something that happens in the story. And I think people should know. I think people should know. All right. So I didn't tell you what I rated this one. I rated this book one star. And let me explain to you why. Like, yes, I did not like the trafficking. I found that very shocking and not in a good way. And I was kind of pissed when I got to that part, but that's, that's honestly not why I rated it one star. So if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you will know that I'm a speech language pathologist. So I work with a bunch of families with a bunch of different disabilities or, you know, just things going on, okay? So I've worked with families with Down syndrome before and the overall goal for those kids is to be independent. Maybe not like 100% independent that they'll never need their parents, but the goal is independence, that they'll be able to do things for themselves. The reason I rated this book one star is because I felt that this book was saying that there is just no way in hell that that could happen, and I don't like that. Rosie gets into all these different situations that are bad, okay, they're upsetting, and I felt like the overall motto of this book was that if she had just stayed home with her parents and let them care for her, then none of this would have happened. And I was just like, no, like, I'm finally reading a book with a main character with Down syndrome, and there was just such a positive way you could have written this book. And I felt like it was just taking all of the hopes and dreams of parents and grinding them into the ground and saying, no, nah, you got to stick with your kid forever or else things like this are going to happen. And I just, oh, oh, I was so disappointed. And I also hated that they made Down syndrome look like that people with Down syndrome are single-minded to the point of reckless. Like, I, I guess that can be true for some people. I'm not saying it's not true, okay? Like, yes, that can be true. But also, like, it cannot be true, too. These people can think for themselves. Like, ah, uh, the reason that this girl left home was so that she could find a boy. And I was like, ah, uh, there, again, there's just, there's so much that could have been done with a story with a protagonist with Down syndrome about a love story, you know, her finding her own way in the world. I felt like it was just a book that could have been so positive, And I was just getting so frustrated and so angry with the way that this book took a turn that I just, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm spending so long talking about it that you can understand why I gave it one star. I will say, don't let my opinion deter you from reading it if it's something that you might be interested in. Because if anything, this book at least does start a conversation. It puts people with Down syndrome in the limelight. Okay, it lets you know that they, they can be independent, they have their own thoughts and feelings, and they want to have a say in their own lives. I think that's good, that's positive, I like that. I just didn't like the rest of it. Then I read another e-arc that I got from NetGalley. This was called Fired Up About Consent by Sarah Ratchford. And dude, I was fired. I totally was. I was fired up by the end of that. I gave it four stars. This is a nonfiction book and it examines consent and it examines rape culture. Um, how we treat girls, and I say girls because it's really like teenagers that <laughs> are treated this way, and how it kind of forms their psyche, you know, like how they should be portraying themselves to other people. It also looks at how we treat men that abuse us and we don't hold them accountable. Like, we try to hold them accountable and there was this whole section about court cases and rape kits and these sentences that these men have gotten that have been proven to rape other people and they're not really chastised for it, you know? Like, maybe they'll spend a couple months in jail. Uh-huh. What? What? Oh man, so again, I was fired up. I was fired up. This was a very aptly named book, okay? And I, I think it's the kind of book that should be available in high schools to educate both men and women. Like, I think this is one of those books that could be a very informative tool for people that are not aware of rape culture yet. Oh, this was so good, guys. This was so good. Then I read another e-arc that I got on NetGalley. This was The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nizrana Farouk. And this was super cute. To me, it was kind of like Aladdin meets Robin Hood. <laughs> like, if you can marry those two worlds together, that's what this book was to me. 
I really liked the friendship between the three kids. It was super cute. It was very fast paced. I felt like I read it in like two hours or something. You know, it's a middle grade book. And it was, again, it was just cute. I will say that I gave it three stars because I didn't feel super strongly about it when I finished it. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I mean, I just told you, it was really cute. I enjoyed my time with it. It's just one that I don't think that I'm really gonna think about again. But a book that I will think about again is The Castle School for Troubled Girls. This one is by Alyssa B. Scheinmel. And this one took me by surprise. Like this was a very cool premise. So the idea is that this school exists, the Castle School. Okay, there's one for girls, there's one for boys. And parents choose to send their kids or apply to send their kids to this school when they kind of just don't know what else to do. I liked that it didn't just center around one kind of mental illness or disorder that was happening. Like, the, the main girl, she was really dealing with some grief, some depression, and I think it just got too much for her parents that they were like, you gotta do something, you gotta go somewhere, we're not doing the best for you, so they sent her off. But that's not the only thing that was in this place. There was um, anorexia, there was alcoholism, um, there was one girl that, uh, that cut herself. Like there was a, a lot of variety of, of different things going on. And I, it was kind of like a found family book again, that these girls, there's 12 of them in the same place and they all, all have something different going on. They're going to therapy sessions with each other while attending school in this school, whatever, <laughs> whatever you call it, and they can't help but form bonds with each other because they gotta help each other through. That's also not the only thing that it was about, too. Like, I, I felt like it was a lot about family dynamics um, and also how we treat people that we don't know how to understand. I mean, these girls had a variety of things going on and their parents just kind of sent them off because they didn't know what else to do. I can't fault the parents because you want to help your kid the best that you can. And if you think that this is the only option after you've tried everything else, I mean, like, you are doing what's best for your kid. I get it. I get it. But also on the other side of that, these girls kind of felt like, oh my gosh, like what's wrong with me that nobody can help me? You know, like there was a lot of different layers going on and I just, I, I really, really liked it. And also as far as the grief goes with the main character, I felt it. Like I, I felt her going through her grief the entire time and trying to come to terms with it. And I felt like that was just depicted really well. Also, I like the way that they divided some chapters. So they'd have like a couple of real-time chapters and then they'd give a single chapter on one of the girls and her backstory to say how she got to the castle school. So I like that we got a backstory on each of the 12 girls. That was just really cool. This is one that I will think about again. I almost gave it five stars and then I was like, no, I mean like, it's not giving me the tinglys, I guess four stars, but I would not be surprised if I went back at some time and gave it five. Next, I listened to the audiobook of My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. Before I get into this, I just want to say, Target, I hate you because I hate these stickers. I can't get them off. Like, <sighs> I feel like there are some bookstores that have it figured out. You can put a sticker on your book that's easy to take off. Target, like, doesn't get it and it drives me bonkers. All right, that aside, let's talk about the book. This book, Totally cute. I gave it four stars. I loved it. It was like, you've got mail, but a modern take on you've got mail. Like she's sending him letters from a dating site and she knows who she's sending them to because she set up a dating site, uh, a dating profile for each of her guy friends. And she also set up a dating profile for herself. She thought that her friend was going to recognize her right off the bat from some things that she said and he didn't. And then, you know, things happen and she got in too deep and then she couldn't tell him the truth. Stuff like that usually makes my stomach hurt. I don't really like books with mistaken identity. I just, I don't know, it makes me very uncomfortable. And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna be found out. I don't like it. However, this was cute and I was into it. And I think the reason that I was more into it is because even though she was talking to him and he did not know who she was, she was being more of herself. She was giving a lot of herself. She was very vulnerable. And I think that's why it didn't make my stomach hurt that I was like, okay, I see why she's doing this, and I'm rooting for her, and I really hope she tells the truth soon. This was good. You know, this is my third Christina Lauren book, and I think I've given each of them four stars. I think I like rounded up autobiography from 3.5 to four, but I gave the Unhoneymooners four stars too, and I really need to read some more books by Christina Lauren because I'm digging them.
Next, I read Havenfall by Sarah Holland. I got this arc from Tatiana a while ago and I just never got to it. I don't know why. I don't know why because I loved it. I loved it. I read it and I was like, how did I not read this sooner? I gave it four stars. I was like between four and five and I was like, you know, it's just not on the level that I give to my five star reads. So I'll, I'll go for four, but four is great, man. Like I was totally into this. Different forms of magic, okay? And these people that live in these different realms with different magic, they can't visit each other's realm. They can only convene at one place called Havenfall, okay? So they like meet there every year to convene and renew their treaty and whatnot, and it's just a magical, magical affair. All right, but there's also a mystery in here. Like her, her uncle gets hurt, don't know what happens, somebody vanishes, somebody clearly wants to take over Havenfall, but you don't know who and you don't know why and things are happening. So I liked the magic, I liked the mystery, I liked the world building. Like I could picture it really well, even the portals that they were describing to these other worlds, I was totally into. But I will say I did have some reservations because I have also read Sarah Holland's other duology, Everless and Evermore. I forget which one comes first, but I read them both. I loved the first one. I gave that one four stars. I was so hyped for the second one, and I gave that one two stars. I was so freaking pissed when I read that second book because it just wasn't like the first at all. But I was like, Sarah Holland, don't you do this to me again. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I will tell you that the last book on this list that I have read was Phoenix Flame because I have the E arc for it. It comes out in March. And man, after reading Havenfall, I was like, please, please be good. All right. I gave this one three stars. I did enjoy it. I did like it. And I was between three and four. You know, that's pretty decent. However, before I wrote my review, like my, my, my routine that I go through is that I read a book and then I read reviews on it to see what other people think before I write my review, just to see if there's anything I should respond to. I'm responding to something in this, okay? People were referring to it as a duology. And I was like, are you serious? Two bucks? That's it? Because there are things that are not answered. Like, there are things that are left wide open and I don't know what happens. And I really hope people are wrong when they're calling this a duology because I will not be happy. So if it's definitely a duology, then it's definitely getting three stars because I will definitely be pissed off, all right? <laughs> If it goes on to a third or a fourth book, I mean, I could bump it back up to four stars because I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed things that happened. It was very fast paced. And I wrote this in my review that fast paced, it can kind of be like a blessing and a curse because I love when a book is fast paced and I'm into it. I'm like, yeah, this is great. This is great. This is great. However, when it's so fast paced, you're not getting all of the details in certain areas that you should. And they kind of glaze by things that I'm like, Oh, I needed more of that because you didn't explain that well and now I got questions. And especially if your book's gonna be a duology, now I got, got pissed off questions. All right, all right. I'll let you know if I find out if it's definitely a duology. I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that there's gonna be more. I'm going to be optimistic and I'm gonna just hope that there's more. Okay, so those are the 11 books that I have read thus far in February. I would really like you to send me all the positive vibes that you can, okay? I need your positive vibes to keep the trees away from the power lines by my house. I cannot go without power again. You know why? Because my nine-year-old child complains nonstop about not being able to play Roblox and I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Oh my God. I'm just, I feel like I'm breaking out in hives just thinking about it. Okay. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for tuning in to Elisa Reads and Speaks, and I will catch you next time, guys. Bye.